Hey guys, it's Kobe McCool and welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Tunes. Things have been a little bit chaotic recently as it's taken me quite a while just to get everything organized in the new studio. I've spent countless hours reconfigurating things on my laptop, factory resetting stuff, re-downloading things. I've sent about 5,000 products back to Amazon because they just haven't been working or haven't been good enough, but we're getting there and that's the most important thing. Plus, it's so exciting to be in this new studio. Now, because I've been trying to upgrade everything, I haven't been able to put as much time into making the videos as I usually would. Today I just want to make a really simple but effective beat that would fit the style of artists like Drake and Bryson Titter. But of course I'll put my own twist on it because that's what I always like to do and I would recommend that if you make beats as well that you try to do that too. It's one thing to copy people, it's another thing to take inspiration and really make it your own. Obviously you can do whatever you want to do, that's just a habit that I get into to try and make things sound a little bit more like Kobe. If you're new to this channel thanks so much for checking the video out, it's so great to see you here and thanks to everybody for liking subscribing and sharing and all of those wonderful things i really appreciate it and it really helps so let's just jump in to the beat so i'm gonna let you hear what i've done first and then i will break down each element The drums are the foundational element of this beat and I decided to go for stereotypically sounding R&B type drums and also to mix in some other hip hop samples to try and blend the two together and create a strong and bold sound but to still have the laid back rhythm and blues feeling that you would get with the typical R&B song. I actually decided to layer both the kick and the snare just to get a thicker, fuller sound. Each sound had a characteristic that the other didn't and together they complemented each other. But you have to be careful with doing something like this because you can end up with clashing or you can just end up trying to do far too much with sounds that just don't work to begin with. So obviously if you can find a sample that just works well on its own, that's your best option and just turn it up. But if not, you can always combine. The first kick I went with had a low thud. Whereas the secondary kick that I added had more high end and a lot crispier sound. And the two combined together just have this thick fullness along with good clarity in the high end so that it cuts through when I mix in the bass and the other elements. The first snare that I went for was a really sharp crispy snare. The second snare I added has more of a clap quality to it and when combined together it just has this really nice full sound. And then the kick and snare together. That's all the kick and snare do throughout the whole beat. They don't change at all, they just repeat the same pattern. But where the interest comes in is the hi-hats and the folly. And it's so easy to overlook how significantly powerful hi-hats and folly are. I started off with a simple pattern.
Now, I, I also just made the pitch of these slightly different so that it moves and flows a little bit, but I kept the volume the same because I just wanted this to be a consistent sound that cuts through well. Then I changed the volumes up with other sounds that were a bit more random. And so that's just a combination of open and closed hi-hats that just accent the rise and fall that the kick and snare have themselves. So I don't just randomly place them and hope that it works. You have to really listen and feel to how it flows and what it's making your body do and if it gels well with where your mind expected the beat to go. Now notice that makes my head bob, but I would want something that's going to make it easy for someone to follow that. So I just put in a very clean, clear hat that just literally follows a four on the floor pattern. This helps to maintain a level of perceived simplicity and just encourages someone's head to nod and if you can get someone moving to whatever it is that you've created then I think you're on the right track. Then I just added some supplementary layers of folly just to make things sound a little bit more interesting so just some clicky, airy, breathy sounds that just add even more emphasis to the fact that everything comes down on that beat and then rises up and then comes down again. That was essentially it, but the key element that I couldn't possibly go without if I wanted to make a classic R&B sound was the 808 cowbell. Now, I never normally use this sound because, to be honest, in the past it really bothered me a lot because <laughs> it just seemed so cliche, but I thought I could actually use it tastefully here. Now, the key was not to have it far too loud, I just let it do its thing. It also makes much more sense when the instruments come in. So the next element I added in was the 808 and I wanted this to move really well with the drums. I also sidechained the kick to the 808 so that it would compress it and control it. It's actually a pretty simple pattern overall. It's just three notes. The chord progression just goes from F sharp to B to E and I just added in some slides and some stops and stutters that corresponded well with the drums. And what I find with these things is that it can seem when you're doing them on their own like you haven't really added in enough or it's not quite full enough. When you keep it simple and just add in a couple of nice tasteful licks and then you add in all the other elements including the instruments and then eventually the vocals, when you then listen back to those foundational elements like the bass and the drums, they sound so much better, they sound like they're all doing what they should in their little place, in their pocket, rather than just being all over the place and doing far too much. But the temptation to add so much more is there because you usually start with those elements and your track is bare at this point. So it seems like you've got loads of space to fill. Whereas if you had all of the other elements already there and all you were adding in was that, you can be certain that you wouldn't add in as much. Whereas if you start from afresh, it's so tempting to add in far too much. And with the mixing of the 808, I just added some Wave Shaper just to saturate it a little bit more. And like I say, I just put some sidechain compression to the kick and I also used a compressor just to push up the levels a little bit more. The only other bass element I added in was a Reese bass. And this is really just a classic Reese sound. There's nothing particularly special about that, but it just works really well. And sometimes that's the best thing to go for. It doesn't always have to be fancy or new. So onto the instruments. The first element that I added in that I've wanted to add into something for quite some time, but just never really had the right place to do it was this patch that I have in Omnisphere. And I really love the sonic characteristics that this sound has because it's got this light, airy breathiness and it also pulses, which fitted so well with the drums and the 808, the ebb and flow that I had cultivated there. I knew that I wanted this one to be up in the higher frequencies, but not to compete too much with the middle elements and certainly not the bass. So I just kept the notes up high and just made it play the simple chord progression. And that was it. 
and I just EQ'd it to complement that. I just removed the lower sounds and I just pushed up the higher end just a little bit more just to make it breathe that much more. I didn't want to push that too much because then it would become sharp and harsh, which the frequencies in this range can often end up becoming. I also sent it to a reverb and a delay here and within the instrument effects bus that I have grouped the, that reverb and delay sent together within has a gross beat on it. And what I've told the gross beat to do is one at the top to play a half time element, which just means that it takes the original sound that's there and slows it down by a half speed. And then I also have a, a half gate pulse, which just makes the effects pulse even more. So I play them on their own. I'll take this to its most extreme. So there's the half time element. And then there is the pulse element. But if I had them right up at the top, it would just be too much. So I just pulled them down a little bit and it just makes that sound even more interesting. And it's things like that as a producer that are so much fun to do. And of course within the reverb and delay I have a Valhalla Supermassive and a Fruity Reverb combined together just to develop the quality of that reverb even more. There were two other elements that I added in with the instruments. A simple Rhodes sound which plays along with the Reese bass when it comes in. In order to make this gel well and feel a little bit more natural, I changed the MIDI so that it had a little bit more of a human element to it, added a bit of a strum and changed the volumes, essentially just humanizing the articulation of that instrument. And then also sent it to the same reverb and delay as I did with the Omnisphere patch, just to make them feel like they were coming from the same place. So they would also be running through the same gross beat effects within the instrument effects bus here. As will the final instrument element, which is this flex synth that I used that is called Digiharp. I had to do quite a bit to tame that sound because initially within flex it was a really pleasant full spectrum sound, but the high end frequencies were very aggressive. So originally the sound sounded like this. But I just decided to take off some of the attack so that it was softer. I also added in more reverb and sent it to the same controls that I did with the other instruments because I actually wanted it to be more ethereal and more of a background sound. It sounded great when it was on its own with a beat, but I know that as soon as I would want to put a vocal in, there wouldn't be room. And essentially that was everything I did for the instrumental. The only other element that I added in were just some little vocal licks and pads just to try and make it a little bit more like my own and to add a little bit of interest in the quieter, softer moments. Now usually I would add even more processing to those vocals using little Alter Boy and some other vocal chains that just make them sound a little bit more interesting, but I can't record my screen and play them at the same time. It just doesn't seem to handle that level of processing all at once. I have just factory reset my computer and re-downloaded and reinstalled everything to try and increase the CPU capacity, but it's just not up to the job. So hopefully in the future I will eventually be able to upgrade in order to show you guys how I would do more stuff like that. I kept the vocal elements relatively simple. I just wanted a couple of slick little licks. And then just recorded reverb effects and reversed them just to add to the swell of everything. And then a pad here. And I do this by having uh, three different vocal chains, a harmony, a lower vocal, and a main vocal with a corresponding vocal chain and just send each of them to different effects, then bust that effect together. And then I would just record that effect out into an Edison like this. 
button, I would reverse that effect and just add it wherever I wanted to. But of course, all that would be tailored to a final song and whatever final vocals would be put in place. Those are usually just good fun. But they do a huge amount in turning a song into something that is your own because if you can use your voice to make beats, I would recommend it. It's just such a versatile instrument that also is completely unique to you. So for now, the plan is to continue working on the studio, just making sure that it's totally set up. There's still quite a long list of tasks that I have to do in order to get it all fully functioning. So that's everything for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, all of those wonderful things. I really appreciate it. Hello to all the new subscribers as well. If you have any questions, please do just leave them down below or send me a message on my Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. I really look forward to sharing the next video with you, but until then, bye.